So as many of you know, I work from home and I record audiobooks. And this is my recording shed where my recording booth is. And where we are on the mountain, we're very reliant on the grid. Yeah. And we do lose power a lot. And we have tried the solution of a generator when power goes out and I can't work. Yeah, you guys have seen that before. It's a big generator. <laughs> it's so loud. Yeah. And so I can't work. If, if we turn on the generator, I have power, but then I can't record because it's too loud. Yes. So we needed a quiet solution that wasn't gonna, you know, take forever to set up. Right. Um, that could get me working when the power goes out, which does happen about once a month, I would say. So it just happened to work out that Blue Eddy emailed us and asked if we wanted to review one of their units. You know, they're very popular with their off-grid solutions and portable battery packs. Everybody's using them. There's other companies, but they do a great job. And we're like, dang, this Heck is yeah. perfect yeah. because we need reliable, quiet power for Natalie Absolutely. to do her job. So it's the perfect setup. We're gonna get it plugged in, set the solar panels outside the shed and fire it up and see how it works. So let's do an unboxing and talk about the tech specs on this unit. Again, this is the Blue Eddy AC200P portable power station. You can charge up this power station using AC power from the grid or your house with the included fast charger. You can also charge it with the car adapter or our preference, the solar panels. Blue Eddy offers a wide variety of solar panels and we opted for the PV350 solar panel kit and it pairs up perfectly with the AC200P power station. The solar panels open up quite easy and they're fast to set up with the included retractable stands. It's a 2000 watt capacity and the inverter inside is 2000 watts as well. So you'll definitely be able to power some hydraw devices. The power station features wireless charging spots for your phones, and it also features plenty of plugs for AC and DC use, and it's especially handy with those USB ports. So we ran the cables up through into the shed, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to unfurl these solar panels. It's like a middle school science project. That's it, there they are. We're gonna mount them on some brackets for a long-term permanent solution so that we can adjust them to be following the sun through the year. But it's remarkably easy to just unroll these and put them out. So we're in the back of the shed and I've been running an extension cord out here from the main house for ever. And we have a little pipe coming up through the outside. So the internet, uh, ethernet cable can come through here and the power cable can come through. I use that same spot to bring through the solar panel cables so that we should just be able to plug right in and get going. All right, so we have our two cables coming in from the solar panels outside, and you have your inputs here. So you take your adapter right here, plug it in. It's obvious which plugs go in which because there's no other way. You can't do it wrong. Even somebody like me can figure it out. Figure it out. You figure it out. Figure it out. You figure it out. You figure it out and boom, and the blue goes in. Nice little connector, it pushes in. Feel it. Make sure you have a good strong connection. Just... All right, now we should be charging. You do wanna make sure that you have the settings on the power bank set to the right form of charging because you can cause a fault. If you have it set to car charging and you put in solar panels, it'll start beeping at you and saying, no, you're doing this wrong. So. I don't know if you can see here. It says PV car and it says 58 watts, 44 watts, 54 watts. So that's the incoming wattage coming from the solar panels. And we literally just have them laying outside the shed right now. So it's not an optimal lo location, but you can see we are getting a charge. The current charge from the power bank is 64% and that's just gonna go up the more we charge it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna unplug the power strip from the grid from our house and plug that same power strip into here. And then we will have taken Natalie's recording booth, her shed, her she shed, her studio, whatever you want to call it. It will be completely off grid and no longer dependent on house power. So on this, you have an AC and a DC. So it says AC and DC are off, tap AC, AC output, tap on. There. So now. So now the outlets are on, okay. The outlets are on. And I just heard all the electronics turn on inside on. the booth. It's working! It's working! So, it shows our output voltage here. 
120 volts, 156 watts out, 60 hertz frequency. So it tells you some information there if you're into that geeky stuff. But when it comes down to it, it simply just works. So we have 27 watts coming in and 144 watts going out. Um, this will Should work. This will work for a while. So pretty cool. It's all turned on. Let's go inside the recording booth, the money making booth, and uh, show everything working as it should. Sunny spot here, but uh, we just wanted to say it's but, all plugged in. But the sun's good because it's gonna charge. Uh, yeah, the sun is good. The Blue Eddy. <laughs> yes. Well, it's all plugged in and it's working obviously well so far. Uh, we're gonna let it run for like at least a few more days before we like say at the end of this video it's the best thing ever. But I mean, but it was so easy to install and everything powered right up. So I'm very optimistic. All right, so I just got back after picking up the girls from school and going skating with them. Natalie's been working her butt off. Uh, <laughs> She's been out time. here for five hours. She's been marathon recording a hard book. And uh, so we're gonna see how much power five and a half hours of recording drew from the Blue Eddy. I think we were 61% mm -hmm. when, when I left her. Let's check it out now. 16%. And it's currently drawing 276 and obviously we're not getting anything from solar right now it is about I don't know eight o'clock at night so I'm gonna have her shut it down she always shuts down her booth and like puts things to sleep and then we're gonna see how much power is being drawn at night when nothing's happening in here but things are still plugged in does that make sense okay. all right so go ahead and shut it down like normal okay. I've got a little cordless light on right now that way it doesn't go dark on us but we'll see how much is drawing when she's not actually recording. And now it is fluctuating between 40 and 70 watts being drawn out. Several days later. All right, guys. So full disclosure, we have been not able to use this lately. We've actually had a lot of cloudy days. In fact, every day since we set it up has been completely cloudy. And so we did plug it into the grid to the house power and we have it charged to 100%. Uh, Natalie's about to start recording for the day and we're going to now plug in the solar panels now that it's actually sunny outside and try to get a real use case established to see how well it performs. Frankly it just hasn't had a chance to work the way it's intended to with the sunny days um, but it is what it is. It's not full off grid but it's still something that we can use for Natalie's booth for her recording studio to make sure that when we lose power she doesn't lose power for a long time and isn't out of work for days on end. So we're gonna get this powered back up and see how it works for today especially with the sun out and see real case on a sunny day how long she can record and how well the solar panels are charging the unit. So you can see already with this sunny day happening I just plugged in the solar panels they're at a pretty good angle with the sun right now Everything is on inside of her recording booth, except for maybe the heated blanket to keep her warm. But uh, you can see we're actually at or just slightly above even power, meaning that the power coming in from the solar panels is matching what is being used inside the recording booth right now. So that's a really good sign. It kind of shows that it's kind of like a wash. So if she's recording on a sunny day, she should end the day with a mostly full battery. And then if the next day is cloudy, she should have enough charge left to get through that day as well. That's much more encouraging to see uh, with the sun out what we can do with this. Two days later. And it's cloudy again. All right, so the battery is dead. One thing that I haven't been taking into consideration is how it's powering this outdoor motion sensor light at night. That's definitely drawing a lot of power as well. Um, so it is what it is. Uh, I was trying to record my closing thoughts here, but the ducks are being too loud. So let's feed them real quick. <laughs> All right, now they're quiet and eating. So for starters, Blue Eddy makes a great product. The battery bank, inverter, everything, that is awesome. It works exactly like it should. The solar panels are great. They work the way they should. 
The issue is it's cloudy and the issue is my expectations were too high for what was gonna happen. Um, maybe in the summer, it'll be a little more self-sufficient with more sunny days going on and not in the winter. But my expectations were too high thinking we'd be completely off grid with what we have now. With that said, we can get a lot closer to being completely off grid if I just add more battery capacity to what we have going on already. We can put a cable on the existing unit and add a battery to it, that is an option. And that would definitely help add capacity to run Natalie's shed off grid. But for now, we'll use it as a backup. We can say that we have good dependable backup power for Natalie. So we're gonna do what's called pass through power. So we're gonna connect the Blue Eddy to the grid and then we will connect the shed power to the Blue Eddy. So there's always power coming into the Blue Eddy on sunny days from the solar panels. And if it's not sunny, we'll always have grid power coming to it. And then that way as a pass through power, it will kind of act like a UPS, not UPS like the brown truck, but UPS as an uninterruptible power supply. And that way when the power goes off, she never even notices it. The battery bank and inverter, it'll all keep operating without the grid power pushing into it. So if the grid goes down for a little bit, we lose power in an ice storm, whatever it might be, she wouldn't even notice it going down because the battery bank would continue working after it stops getting power from the grid. So the system is awesome for backup power. It's awesome for taking power with you on the go. I mean, we don't go camping that much because we were tired of living in a camper for so long. But if we went camping, we could take that with us. It's portable enough. The solar panels are absolutely portable enough. We could take it with us on road trips and camping and all over the place. So it's an awesome system. And I do think we might add some battery capacity so that she can go longer in between charge cycles. But for now, it's an awesome backup power source. We appreciate Blue Eddy for sending it out to us to try out. It's been a fun little experiment. And this whole thing has just made me really excited for our plans for solar power for the house and for another property in the not too distant future. So that's it for today. We appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you on the next video.